Wolverine is a semi-immortal mutant who has lived for a very long time. We're talking at least a century, if not two. And all the while staying in perfect health and youth. And in all that time, he has done quite a lot of bad things. And in doing so, made quite a lot of enemies. But his worst deed, at least to my mind, is the time that he slaughtered his own children. And this video is going to go over the events that led to this and how Wolverine killed them. It all starts decades ago with a self-made man, who came to own several coal mines and was extremely wealthy. But his miners went on strike to get better work conditions, so the man got some men together and went to beat the crap out of them until they got back to work, which was how it was done back then, they were called strike breakers. But it does tell you exactly the type of person this man was. But even after the beatdown, the miners continued to strike, and they even got a union mediator in to negotiate better terms, along with some muscle from Wolverine. And Wolverine single-handedly takes down any muscle that the man can find. And so the strike kept going on, and it went on for so long that eventually the man knew he was beat, and he had to negotiate with them. After all, each day the strike went on, he was losing money. But the man didn't take losing very well. And that's why at the negotiations, he got extremely drunk to drown his sorrows. But because of all the alcohol, he ended up losing his temper with the woman from the union, and he hit her in the face with a bottle, killing her. Now, as you can imagine, Wolverine didn't like this at all. Now, the man hadn't actually meant to kill her, he just lost his temper and acted out. And he immediately regretted it. But that didn't matter to Wolverine. And so Wolverine killed him. But he left his son alive, which was his biggest mistake that he's ever made. Now, the son should have got his father's empire after he died, but instead, he inherited nothing. Because when his father died, others descended like jackals and stole all of his mines and wealth for themselves. But that didn't deter the boy. He'd inherited his father's mind for business, and he worked hard for years, made clever investments, and eventually became rich himself, even buying back the family coal mines. But instead of running the mines, he decided to set them on fire, as they weren't what he really wanted. No, what he wanted was revenge. Revenge on the man who had killed his father. Revenge on Wolverine. It wasn't easy, but again, he wasn't scared of hard work. And so he spent even more years searching and tracking until he finally came across Logan, and he shot him dead. Or at least, he thought he had. But Wolverine's healing factor got him back up and into the fight. And obviously this man didn't know about the healing factor. But soon after, the man was admitted to hospital with some serious and life-threatening injuries. But the man still didn't give up. He tried to kill Wolverine again, but he survived. So he tried again and again in different and more deadly ways. But no matter what he did, Wolverine survived. Until finally he realized that he couldn't kill Wolverine alone. And so he found others who had had loved ones killed by Wolverine and he formed an alliance with them and they became known as the Red Right Hand, an organization dedicated to making Wolverine suffer for what he had done. Now, some of their loved ones that Wolverine had killed were bad guys. Some were people he'd assassinated while working for Weapon X. Others were just collateral damage from superhero fights. But it didn't matter to the ones who were left behind how or why their loved ones had died. They simply blamed Wolverine for it all, for taking away their friends and families. And so the group investigated Wolverine for years, learning more and more about him, probably more than even Wolverine knew about himself after all the mind wipes he's had. And they soon realized that they couldn't actually kill him. No one seemed to be able to kill him. So instead, they decided to make his life a living hell, literally. They captured Wolverine's soul and sent it to hell, where it was tortured by the devil himself. Meanwhile, his body was possessed by demons, charged with killing Wolverine's loved ones. Of course, Wolverine eventually escaped hell and returned to his body. And then he went looking for the red right hand in order to get his own payback. But the organization wanted Wolverine to come. So they actually released the address and details of the red right hand online so that he would definitely come to get them. But Wolverine went straight to the red right hand's headquarters where he was met by Cannonfoot. Now Cannonfoot was a member of the Mongols, five warriors who were charged with killing Wolverine. They were pretty much the right red hand's enforcers. And Wolverine made quick work of them all, killing Cannonfoot, the overly sexual Shadow Stalker, Fire Knives, who has knives that burn like fire, Sawfist, who has chainsaws strapped to his arms, these are very clever names you understand, and Gunhawk, who has guns that are also shaped like knives. 
And in truth, none of these Mongols had the skill to defeat him. They never had anywhere near the skill needed. Though the Red Right Hand had known that from the start, and they just lied to them and said they did. But all they could really do was die and slow Wolverine down. But after Wolverine had dealt with the Mongols, he finally broke into the hiding place of the leaders. Only to find that every single one of them was already dead, having drunk poison and committed suicide. At which point a message plays, informing Wolverine of who they are and why they did everything they did. And they also reveal to him that the five Mongols that he has just killed were in fact his children. You see, Wolverine is extremely old and quite well known for getting drunk in bars. And it turned out that more than a few drunken one night stands had resulted in children. Children that Wolverine never even knew existed. But the red right hand had been able to track them down with a little help from Dakin, who is one of Wolverine's other children, but we'll get to him in a minute. You see, basically, the Red Right Hand knew that they couldn't beat Wolverine, and instead, they decided to let him think that he was beating them, while all along he was doing exactly what they wanted, tricking him into killing his own children in order to destroy his life and make him feel what they had all felt, the loss of a loved one who had been killed by Wolverine. And then they had killed themselves so that Wolverine couldn't even get the simple revenge of killing them. All Wolverine had done was ensure that his own blood died. And this is without a doubt the worst thing that an enemy has ever done to Wolverine. And it completely destroys him. He does track down the families of the dead and takes their bodies back to be buried. But after that, he leaves society, leaves all of the other heroes and goes to live alone in the wilderness, lost in his own grief spending his days and nights climbing cliffs and then jumping off of them, knowing that he can't die, but enjoying the few moments after he hits the ground where he is dead and in oblivion, before his healing factor brings him back to life and he repeats the process over again. Now this didn't last forever of course, uh, eventually he got over his grief, or at least began to deal with his grief, and the Avengers and the X-Men came to return him home. But Wolverine was never the same after this, as it really was the worst thing that had ever happened to him. And that is how Wolverine murdered his own children, by giving in to his animal nature and unchecked killing in the name of revenge. Had he followed the ideals of other heroes who don't go around killing their enemies, he'd have been fine. But instead, he killed his enemies and he suffered as a result. All of which was intended by the Red Right Hand, of course. They not only wanted to hurt him, but they wanted to show him that his philosophy and way of living is destructive and wrong. And it is simply the best revenge that any normal person could ever hope to get on a semi-immortal warrior like Wolverine. In fact, this hurts Wolverine far more than if they'd actually been able to kill him. Though their story does have one final twist to it. After the Red Right Hand dies, every single member goes to hell. Which, oddly enough, is something that never seemed to occur to some of them. They became so fixated on getting revenge on Wolverine that they didn't realise that they'd sunk to his own level of desperate revenge seeking, basically becoming the very thing they wanted to destroy. And this fate of them going to hell is, quite honestly, absolutely perfect, as it is literally what they deserve after all they've done. But this isn't the only time that Wolverine has killed his children in the main Marvel Universe continuity. No, he has also killed his other son, Dakin. Now, Dakin is probably the most well-known son of Wolverine, and he has inherited his father's healing factor and bone claws, along with the extra power of being able to manipulate others by secreting pheromones. But the real thing about Dakin is that he has all of the skill and power of his father, but he is a remorseless psychopath. He doesn't have any of his father's morals, and is without a doubt a pure evil supervillain, or at least as pure evil as they come and he despises his father and has tried many, many times to kill him. And he was the one who gave the Red Right Hand all the information on Wolverine's other children. You see, they didn't even know about the other children. They actually weren't that well organised in some respects. But Dakin gave him the information and made it pretty clear that this was the best way to hurt Wolverine. So basically, he got his own brothers and sisters killed just so he could hurt his father. Because all he wants is to make Wolverine suffer. And in a quest for this, he joins a brotherhood of mutants and attacks Wolverine with them and fights his father. But again, he is unable to beat him. So Dakin tells Wolverine that he is going to go to his mutant school and kill all of the children, just to hurt his father. And since Wolverine has talked to his future self, he knows that it's true, because his future self didn't kill Dakin, and then Dakin attacked the mansion and killed all the kids. And so, since Wolverine knows that none of the X-Men can stop him, at best they'll slow him down, 
but no matter what, Dacom will still be alive after the fight, and he'll still be able to kill some, if not all, of the children. And with his healing factor, he'll always be able to come back, as he has all the time in the world to do so. So Wolverine decides that the only thing he can do is put his son down once and for all, as it is the only way to protect the students of his school. Now the problem is, how do you kill someone with Wolverine's healing factor, since it essentially makes a person immortal? And personally, I hate the answer that the writer uses, which is to drown them. Now, it has been accepted in other comics that drowning someone with a healing factor is the only way to kill them, as even a healing factor can't fix a dead brain. Which makes absolutely no sense, since Wolverine himself has actually had his brain completely destroyed in the past, whether it was adamantium bullets going through it, or just having his brain burnt away with fire. And yet afterwards, Wolverine was still able to regenerate and regrow his brain. And if he can do that, then clearly a brain will be able to heal itself even if it's damaged from lack of oxygen. But Marvel have decided that drowning can't be fixed. So Wolverine drowns his son and kills him. And it just doesn't really make any sense, because if you could just drown Wolverine, then why the hell wouldn't people have done it sooner? Now I do have to say that the Dakin storyline was only so-so to be honest. I mean, his part in the story wasn't actually the best. It was more the Kid Apocalypse part. But the story wasn't bad, it was just nothing special. And as I say, I really disagree with the death by drowning working on a person with a healing factor. That should not be able to kill them. It's just silly. But personally, I did absolutely love the Red Right Hand storyline. The first part with Wolverine going to hell, I wasn't actually that much of a fan of, as to be honest, it seemed a bit silly to me. But him hunting down and accidentally killing his own children is a fantastic read. It's messed up beyond belief, but it really shows who Wolverine is at his heart, and it shows us just how dangerous his life really is to those around him. And as sadistic as it sounds, watching this legendary fearless character being broken down and destroyed like this, well, it's a very entertaining read. But what do you think about Wolverine killing his own children? And do you think that drowning can kill a person with a healing factor? Be sure to let us know in the comments. And I'd like to say a quick thank you to those who made this video possible by donating to the Needle Mouse Productions page on Patreon. And as always, thanks for watching, and feel free to subscribe, share, like, and comment.